certain routine every year he would go to uh, London and then uh, New York and then to Montreal in Canada collect the money from the same people that he usually goes to and go back to Israel okay with with the money or money orders or whatever and one time he comes to this guy that lives in Montreal and he gave him a nice contribution but he sees that he's not happy he sees that he's sad he's asking him what happened so he tells him since you asked already I'll tell you look at my house a huge mansion I have accessories I have all kind of furniture I have all kind of gadgets I have everything but the house is empty no children saddens me, it, it bothers me, what should I do? We went to the best doctors, we went, the, 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 we, we, we did all the treatments and, and, and nothing, the, the, they don't understand themselves what's the problem, but we don't have kids and we married for many, many years already. So he tells him, but I think that I know what was my problem. This man from Montreal, he tells him himself, many years ago when I was learning in a yeshiva in Israel, so in Israel, there, there's something interesting on, on Yom Purim, which is a day of happiness and everything. In the yeshivot, they make uh, a guy to entertain everyone, to say all kind of jokes, to say all kind of fun, fun things. It's called Badakhan. And a, a special rav for Purim. He makes jokes, he, he may fun, make fun of people. And I made fun on one of the my, my, one, of the, one of the guys over there and I went very hard on him and I humiliated him and I insulted him so much that I saw that it bothers him in a way people tell him tell me already stop stop and I continue I don't know why I continued continued and then when I saw that he starts crying only this is when I stopped I know that it's because of this I know that he doesn't forgive me but I don't know how to look for him I live for so many years in, in Canada already I have no way of knowing where where he is now in Israel if he's there at all how to look for him so he just gave the this person the guy he gave him the name and the place that in the, the yeshiva where he landed he doesn't know his number he doesn't know nothing he told him if you can take care of this, I'll be so... I gave him so much money, to just take it, just take it, whatever you want, just take and find... And if you want to appease him, if he wants a lot of money, just give. I have no problem, just find him and, and ask him to forgive me. So, fine, he starts making all kind of phone calls, phone calls away. He had already had to go back to Israel and continue with the phone calls until he found this guy. And he talks to him and tells him, does this name tell you something? And he mentions the name of this person that lives in Montreal, he says, yes, but I want to talk about him. Mm. He says, please, please, can I meet with you? He says, okay, in a, in a condition that you're not talk, going to talk to me about him. He said, okay. Mm -hmm. He comes to him, and of course, the first thing he starts talking to him mm -hmm. is about this. He says, I don't want to talk about this. I want to get upset again. Just leave me alone. He says, no, please, you have to understand. He's so miserable. He doesn't have children. He, he's, and he, he explains him, and he describes him, the problem. He says, I can't even explain you how humiliated I felt at that day and so many weeks later and so all my friends made fun of me and, 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 and I'm really upset. It took me some time to find my shiru because of that and, 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 and it's not, it wasn't easy. So, and, and he didn't know what to tell him. So eventually he was about to leave. He tells him, I just want to tell you one thing. After 120 years, when people go Hashem, they go back, they go to heaven, and uh, <clears throat> they will show you this thing. In the in the Olam I met, in the world of truth, this matter won't be so big like it is now to you. And because of this thing, because Hashem is going to tell you, you know, this person had a potential to have daughters, to have sons, to have next generations, big people, and you prevented all this because of your grudge. You want to take it upon yourself? This is when he said, okay, I want to think about this. Already, he opened a little bit. He continues talking, talking, talking. Okay, are you willing to talk to him? <laughs> so he gives him the phone. And so he calls him 
and he asks for forgiveness and it was so hard for him and he says, okay, I forgive. So the man in Montreal says, please bless me. He says, this I cannot do. Oh. I cannot do. I so can't. Forgive. Please forgive me. P please, uh, please bless me. And he asked him and he begged him and then he blessed him. And within one year, he already had his first uh, wow. baby born. Right. Uh, first one. This is, this is Mechila. This is when somebody really forgives 100% and he was even blessing afterwards. This is so beautiful. So, <clears throat> let's say somebody decides a weird decision that he is not going to take a shower for a whole year. Mm. Let's say. <laughs> so what happens? The first day, okay, he goes outside. It's, today was hot, right? Mm -hmm. So he sweats. He sweats, okay. Uh, then the second day, uh, a few days pass, he sees that his hair starts to be oily and he has all kind of dandruff and, and, and he smells bad and, and he needs to take a shower. And then his legs get dirty because of the sand and small stones that uh, get into him and then his clothing are so smelly and then, and then, and then people start to get away from him and when they see him they don't cross they don't stand next to him they cross the road to the other side because they cannot stand him slowly slowly after months after this after that bus drivers don't want him to go on their bus or cab drivers don't want to you cannot stand this person you cannot stand this man he cannot stand himself okay after one year like that he goes to the shower for the first time. How does he feel? He feels nothing. Huh? He feels nothing. Nothing? Well, he buys this good soap to clean from him all these levels mm. of dirt on his body. He soaks in the dirt and he's cleaning layer after layer, layer after layer. After. You can see a face all of a sudden. Okay? You have a good energy. You look, you, 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 you can do stuff, you, you, you feel like a newborn. It's a totally different person. Before, he, people couldn't look at him. People, people, now, he, his face are, are shining, his, uh, his body, it, it's totally different, right? This is what happens when people, <clears throat> they decide that they want to be clean. And that's what happened to us on Yom Kippur every year. Okay, how do we look like as Yom Kippur ends? We're like angels. <laughs> we say, Baruch Shem, Kevod Machut We're like angels, we didn't eat, we didn't eat, and you're not rushing to eat usually. After you had a fast, you're okay with waiting a few more minutes, or I don't know, you feel like an angel. You, you took up on yourself, you were elevating yourself, you prayed so much, okay? But then, uh, a day later or something, you forgot to say a bracha after you ate a cake. Three days later, you said Lashon Mora on somebody. Okay. And then, you know, you were not so careful about Kashrut, you were not so careful about this and that. Slowly, slowly, another stain covers your Neshama, and, and another stain, 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 the whole year. Imagine to yourself how filthy is our Neshama in the end of the year. So this system that we Hashem granted us, this mercy of cleaning ourselves once a year for Yom Kippur, okay, is such a chesed. You're able to clean it. And how you feel when you clean yourself? When you, you feel energized, you feel new. You feel you can conquer the war. You can feel, you feel you can do everything. Why? Because you got clean. You took away this burden of all the sex that you, 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 you took with you all these years of grudges with, about people, of hatred, of, of all kind of problems and this and Averot and other Averot that you did, you cleanse, you, you, you clean now. You feel so much better. Harav <clears throat> um, Galinsky, <laughs> he used to explain once something like that. He said, uh, there is a certain mosquito that lives only one day. Even though in the Gemara said that uh, it, it's, it's less, it's more, whatever, there's a whole big discussion there how many, how long it uh, lives. 
but they, there was an incident in the Gemara once, they said that there, uh, a female mosquito and a male mosquito was fighting once. The female mosquito realized that the male mosquito, he found a, a, a healthy looking fat man mm -hmm. and he sting him mm -hmm. and he enjoyed, he sucked the blood from him and he didn't tell her. He didn't tell her, come, 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 enjoy too. She was so upset at him, she told him, you ate alone, you live alone. She left him and she, did, she didn't want to live with him. It's like that. The rabbi is here, they make fun of her. He says, how long this mosquito lives? One hour, one day. I don't know, how much it lives? Instead of enjoying life together, spending time together, you know, being looking for the good, she looks for the bad. Instead of enjoying, she holds grudge. She remembers that he was so. Is it so hard to find other people? And how much? How much blood do you need? You need one job. It's just, it, it, there's no people in the world you can suck from them. There, she remembers one thing, and then she. So, but in a way, we're the same. We think we have 70, 80 years to live. Hello, and we uh, we afford ourselves to sometimes keep grudge on people for decades. Some mm -hmm. people don't talk to other people for decades because he didn't look at me the right way. He didn't say to me. He didn't respect me. And we allow ourselves this thing. And the same way that we laugh at this at this mosquito, we're supposed to laugh at ourselves <laughs> because sometimes we do the same mistakes. So we have plans. We have plans. There was this young couple that Lo Leno, they died in, 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 in an accident and they had a baby with them in the car, sitting in the car seat. This baby was safe. He was crying, crying, crying as the police came, people, this, eh? the baby was crying uh, so much over there. And uh, so the authorities, they put the, the, they put the baby in this uh, orphanage house and he was raised there. All his childhood was in this orphanage house with kids that unfortunately don't have parents and uh, normal families. After some time though, this institution started to get uh, routinely, okay, money, specifically, specifically for, for this Henry, for this baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Apparently, uh, unknown uh, donor used to send them money, especially for this Henry. And as he grew up, he was shocked. This Henry, that he was um, he was accepted to one of the big universities, and all the I say uh, the money. The, the, College, uh, scholarship. The, scholarship, the scholarship was paid already in advance uh -huh. by this donor, no one knows who tuition. it is, the tuition whatever was paid already and um, so he decided that he wants to become an architect. You have to learn, it's very hard, many years, this and that, he Hashem, finished everything, successfully passed all these exams, everything was okay. Now it's hard to find a job because there's so much architects, there's so much engineers, so much, and it's hard to find a job. So he doesn't know what to do. And then there were rumors among all these engineers and the architects that a very, very big billionaire, he wants to build a huge building, you know, a skyscraper, and he's looking for engineers and, and architects for that. So he didn't even think that, he, he doesn't have any experience, he doesn't know on anything, but he went and uh, he went to, for this uh, interview and he was, uh, this billionaire met him and he wants to hear him, you know, what are you, I'm looking for young people that, you know, have a, you know, exceptional way of thinking and, 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 and you know, I, I need, I need a new way of thinking and, and I'm looking and I would like you to meet me again with in, in, within three months, please build for me a nice model. What you're planning for me, and I'm going to I'm going to give you the salary for meanwhile, and and then I'll meet with you in three months. So you so first of all understood as a big miracle that this man met him and accepted him. He understood the responsibility that he gave him, and then he was really trying to work. So the first week he was working very very hard, and then he became sick. 
there is this disease that's called mano. You know, this, uh, people become weak, they have no energy to do anything, they just lay down in bed and they cannot do anything. That's what happened to him. He felt so bad that he cannot do he 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 had expectations from him, this billionaire, and now he cannot do anything. He rested in bed, he was no no choice. But then towards the end when he saw that he really has to finish his model, give him the, the project and, and so he worked as much as he could and then the last night for some reason, I don't know, he left the gas open and left something open, everything caught fire and he mm. lost his Whatever he prepared, all these plans, all whatever he wrote, or everything, uh, you know, got burned uh, down. He didn't know what to do. He was felt so bad. He met the next day with a rich man. He says, I'm, "I cannot explain myself, but that's what happened." So the guy tells him, "You know, I'll give you a chance. Can you explain me by heart at least what were your plans?" And he explains him, and he tells him this and that, and he says, "Listen, I like it. I want it. I really want it." He says. Why are you so good to me? You don't have to look at me. Why are you so good to me? So the rich man tells him, you know, from young age, uh, whenever your parents passed away in this, uh, in this accident, I was in that scene. And I saw you as a baby crying out for help. And I felt so mercy. And I took upon myself to help you. Mm. So I paid for your orphanage, and I paid for your tuition, and I paid for all your expenses, this and that. And I really want to help you. <laughs> so you just go ahead with your plans, and I will put you, you're going to be in charge of building this thing. You're going to be, you know, inspecting this and running out. You're going to be in charge of this, don't worry. I just want you, you do your plans, and I will help you as much as possible. And, uh, and uh, everything should be okay. Basically, the rabbi gives this as a mashal. They say, in the, high ho in the high holidays, we take upon ourselves all kind of kabbalot, mitzvot, kabbalot. You say to yourself, I'm going to try not to speak one hour Lashon a day. Mm -hmm. I'll try. I'll try to accept the Shabbat five minutes early or mm -hmm. to take it out five minutes later. It's not, it's not so hard, like accepting it. I'm going to try to to work on this, I'm going to try to work on that. We have so much plans and uh, and uh, and we want to continue and progressing, but the problem is the Yetzirah, the Ibn Galatian comes, burns out this, burns out that, you know, bothers us, Don't doesn't let us to go ahead with our plans. We want to become better, we want to become good Jews, we want to build a, a yeshiva, we want to, to, to give donations, we want to do this, we want to do that. And the answer finds always ways how not to do it. You decided that you're going to be nice to the person, and then she comes and she says something to you, and you say, how can I be nice to you now? And it's just the answer that even then she kind of doesn't let you to do this, uh, to do these good things that, uh, that you, you took upon yourself. And we beg to Hashem, Hashem. Please God, give us another chance. We're praying to you. We want to continue on. We want to f go forward. Please accept our prayers so that and give us the, the strength and the life to continue doing what we want. And Hashem gives us. Hashem gives us life. And Hashem grants us good life. Not only life, but good life. You know, uh, we take a lot of things for granted, but the fact that we can breathe, the fact that we can um, smile, the fact that we can uh, do stuff, go, come, uh, create, it's a whole big thing. And uh, we just pray to Hashem, Hashem, keep listening to us, keep, uh, please um, let us do all the plans that we have, you know, to, to make the world better, to, to be nice to one another, to fix that scene between Ben Adam Lechavero, to work on better on Ben Adam Lemakom, you know, to make the world a better place, another, a nicer place, and Bezad Hashem to build our spiritual skyscraper, to build our building, and to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what we're praying okay. for, Yom Kippur, Bezad Hashem. Okay. And uh, may Hashem listen to, to our prayers and help yeah. us yeah. elevate and come closer to Him because that's what we want to come closer yeah. to Hashem. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you very much.
questions.